they started the government with a peso to dollar rate of 60, 60 euro. And by the end of the four year term, we were at 1,200 uh, pesos to a dollar. So we went down like 20 times, right? And since the economy is so destroyed, we have like, I know, 150% inflation per year. The inflation numbers are like 10, 15% per month, right? So prices are always changing and there is no mortgages. So if you want to buy a house, you meet up with a seller in a room with a notary and you have a suitcase of $100,000, $200,000, you count them, right? And you sign, uh, everything is done in cash. What's the second best? There is no second best. There is no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset, it's called Bitcoin, right? Right, there is no second best. Hello, How you doing, Victor. How are you, Ariel? Great, great. Yeah. I'm we loving are. this film festival, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's really great. good. Great. What was your favorite one? Well, the last one, Dirty Coin. It's yeah? a documentary about Bitcoin mining. And it has like a clickbait title because yeah. it says like Bitcoin is dirty, but it's actually not. Yeah, it's all the, the contrary uh, argument and everything. It was really great. I, I like the, the way that uh, she bring the, the other voice without uh, putting in, in a kind of wrong way and uh, like try to... Yeah, to push it like it was the, the wrong voice, but just put it as equal as the rest of the voice. Uh -huh. And so the, the people can just try to, to find their own uh, truth. Opinion, great for exactly. This. Yeah. yeah. It's a really interesting topic. I mean, uh, people, yeah, try, try to trash Bitcoin. Um, I, my, my position on it is that the people that want to do other coins, uh, because everybody wants to create their own money, right? Imagine like having the ability to make your own money. It's a temptation that we've had for centuries, thousands of years. And now everybody can do their own crypto. Even like a 15-year-old kid or 12-year-old kid can make his own crypto. Yeah. So the reason why they push, no, Bitcoin is bad because of the CO2, that's not the real reason. The real reason is that they cannot copy Bitcoin. They cannot recreate proof of work. There can only be one true, safe uh, proof of work system. Mm. So that's the reason why they push proof of stake, right? Uh, it's because if they did, for example, if I did my own coin and I had a proof of work system, Okay, I have, I know, a hundred miners mining my coin, a thousand miners mining my coin. Okay, that can be attacked. That can be destroyed. Uh, like, if somebody can get that 10,000 miners to point towards my blockchain, my blockchain is totally unsafe. Mm -hmm. So having that word blockchain doesn't mean, uh, or having the word crypto, oh, it uses cryptography. Yeah, it's not safe, right? Uh, it can be destroyed. So I guess the other side trying to make other coins realize this. And now that's why they push the narrative of, no, proof of work is bad. Let's use proof of stake. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And uh, we didn't introduce yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the introduction. <laughs> Puck shit coin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So who are you? Uh, like you, I'm you Ariel, live in a van? <laughs> yeah, I live in a van. Uh, I'm Ariel Aguilar. I'm from Argentina. I've been, well, teaching people about Bitcoin for a few years now. And back in Argentina in 2018, a group of Argentines decided to make a Bitcoineta. Bitcoineta is a Bitcoin ban. I will show you a photo of it. Uh, so, or you can superimpose. Yeah, I will, uh, I will add it. Yeah. So the first one was from 2018. In Argentina, it traveled around Argentina, uh, Chile, Uruguay, the south of Brazil, Paraguay, Bolivia. And when Bukele announced Bitcoin as legal tender, they tried to make a trip from Buenos Aires to El Salvador to give the van as a gift to the people of El Sonte. 
but they couldn't do the trip. When they tried to cross from Bolivia to Peru, there were COVID restrictions, so they couldn't make it. And the Argentine community gave the second Biconeta to the people of El Sonte. They bought a new one uh, and they gave it as a gift. Then, one year later, people from El Sonte bought uh, a Toyota Land Cruiser and gave it as a gift to the community of Biconecasi in South Africa. Okay. Uh, one year later, 23, uh, Fernando bought a Biconeta in Spain and we did the European Biconeta. So we did a trip uh, like from May till October last year, uh, traveling all the way from Spain to, G to Istanbul in Turkey, all the way to Oslo uh, in Norway, all the way to Edinburgh in the UK. So we went all the way yeah. around Europe. And where did you get the, the most attention and the, well, where the, the resonance? <laughs> well, some of the most populous meetups were either in Spain or uh, Belgrade. Um, also, for example, Switzerland was one of the countries that most recognized Bitcoin. Hmm. So they waved or, or gave yeah. the thumbs up, right? Uh, so last year we organized like 40 meetups in different cities. And the idea this year is to do small conferences. So last year we finished with a small conference in Andorra. It was the first Bitcoin only conference of Andorra. And now the idea is to do the same in cities that have not had yet a Bitcoin conference. So we started with Fodigoritza, Montenegro. We did a beautiful conference in a hotel. We had uh, Prince Philip of Serbia come to give a, a closing. Samsung Mo gave a remote uh, conference. I gave a talk about the topic where we started this conversation about why Bitcoin not crypto, right? And other people joined as well to give their talks. So the plan is, well, now we're going to the UK after this. We already have one set up for Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. It's going to be May 17th, in case you're seeing this before that. Uh, you, can, you, should, you should come as well. And we want to do, yeah, uh, Belgrade, um, more cities in the UK. Uh, we're going to go through Denmark on the way to Oslo. We want to do one in Copenhagen. Okay, we never stop. Yeah, the Biconeta doesn't stop. Okay. That's our, our motto, right? Will you, will you give the, the fire to someone else one day? Yeah, I mean, our Bitconeta has inspired the creation of two more Bitconetas. Okay. So the people from Tresor saw it in BTC Prague. Uh, they got inspired to buy a Bitconeta for Ghana, West Africa. And that one is now touring in Ghana uh, for the Kauri community in Ghana. And now we also have a, a new one being announced on the Halvin uh, for Denmark, which is a Citroen uh, to C CB. Uh, yeah. It's the old Citroen. So Denmark will have its own Bitconeta just for Denmark. Okay. Uh, I want to... There is a lot of people. <laughs> we are surrounded by know. kids now. <laughs> I, I wish you could see this. Yeah, <laughs> like a, a wave. <laughs> yeah, we're in a kindergarten. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope the, the song will be good. Um, I wanted to talk about Argentina because oh. you're kind of a specialist in our group of Bitcoiner. There's not that many people uh, with which we can speak about and have some uh, inner uh, information. And... Who is Javier Mille for, from your perspective? Well, Javier is a, he, he used to be an economist that was a like, classical economist with Chicago School of Economics. But around 2014, he read Ross Rothbard. Uh, he started reading the Austrian economist book and he became an Austrian economist. 
and he started pushing on media. He started going to TV programs and shows and started to talk about uh, yeah, anarchism, crypto, no, no, sorry, not crypto, uh, anarcho-capitalism, right? And that, back then, that was totally unknown. And he had this uh, personality where he was really passionate about his ideas, right? And that really catch on with people because typical classical liberal or other type of economists are like with like suit up, right? Stiff, like, okay, let's talk about economics because freedom is good, right? Uh, sometimes we call them like cocktail economists, right? They yeah. eat canapés, right? Uh, and they are always like in a high society gathering, right? And they don't leave that sphere. Mm. But Millet used to be, at one moment when he was young, he used to be a football player. He was a goalkeeper, right? And another time he was a band, uh, he was in a band, he's a singer, yeah. right? So he had this messy hair, he's passionate, and he started going to TV shows. And one of Argentina's main, yeah, TV show anchors, a grandfather thing like, okay, I'm gonna teach you the tips on how to catch an audience, how to get rating, right? And so Millet started like getting the rating up of the shows. And uh, so he's doing the proof of work. He's going to TV shows for years and years, rising in popularity. Since 2014. Yes, yeah, at first it was like radio shows, uh, cable news, right? So it was really unpopular. But little by little he went to national TV. And by 2020 or by the pandemic, he was known all, all around Argentina and that's when he decided uh, okay I'm going to go into politics he decided to go in first as a deputy and it was a surprise people were expecting he to him to get like three five percent and he got like if I recall correctly around 15 percent right so that was like going from nothing to 15 percent was amazing you said as a deputy? Yes. Because there is election for, for it? Yeah, in 21. Okay. Uh, 2021. Is it the people that uh, yes. elect? Okay. Yeah. So he became a deputy for two years. Many people tried to convince him, oh, you should go into this political party, do the interns, uh, do the primaries, and perhaps someday you will become a candidate for president. And he was not, no, no, I'm going to be a candidate for president, right? Uh, this is, there's no discussion about this. So I'm going to go and make my own coalition, my own party, right? And he did that. And when we had the primaries, he came first. He had like 30% of all the votes and 30% was position number one. So that really shook up all the media, they were not expecting that. They were expecting him to be third, right? Or fourth. And so they had to invite him. They had to have him on. I mean, if you're number one, you, yeah. you have to be, I mean. Uh, and so, yeah, they keep on uh, the campaign for the real election. And on the real election, he came in second, right? But since there was so little difference with the first, uh, there had to be a runoff, a rerun of the election, a balotage in French, right? Mm. Uh, and that when that is when Vinay won, and he because won. Because usually it's in one term. Yes. There is so one round, but if the the spread is too low, they have to they, they go for another round. Yeah. Okay. Place the first and the second, and all the rest get kicked off. So. Uh, the person that came in number three, a woman, and her party started supporting Millet, right? Uh, and so we didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, the first candidate uh, was uh, from the current government at that time. And that government was a disaster. It was like they, 
it started the government with a peso to dollar rate of 60, 60. And by the end of the four year term, we were at 1,200 uh, pesos to a dollar. Uh, so we went down like 20 times, right? Um, so we didn't know if they were gonna win. They started doing crazy stuff like printing money like crazy to pay for yeah, favors or uh, uh, like uh, making everything free just to support the main candidate. And even though he printed like, I don't know, 10% of the GDP to pay for the campaign. Only the campaign. Only the, yeah, yeah, to favor the candidate. And Millet spent zero pesos, zero dollars on his campaign. It was all because of his attraction, uh, yeah. because of the fact that like he organic got organic growth, natural yeah. one. Exactly. So the other political the politicians were super crazy. Like they always had to put a lot of effort and money to be yeah appreciated. And this guy came from nowhere, spent no money, and got elected. Right, and he has become the first self-declared libertarian or anarcho-capitalist ever in history to become president. So this is a world first. So you could say that Millet now is almost like a world leader in this regard. Uh, he's showing the way to other candidates, even candidates like uh, Trump or, yeah, in other countries, that this can be done. You can run as an anarcho-capitalist on wins, right? You can uh, defend the ideas of liberty, of uh, yeah, uh, going against central banks. Millet did a campaign like hitting central banks with a piñata, right? With a with a, um, with a bat, and his goal in the end is to give people monetary freedom, so you can choose whatever currency you like be it dollar or Bitcoin, right? Mm. Um, and I hope someday he closes the Argentine Central Bank because this Argentine Central Bank has been nothing but a machine to destroy the life of people, of sucking the energy out of them. Because for now, there is still the pesos. Yes. Yeah. Because they, they say they want to dollarize the country, but it was already kind of dollarized because yes. people were saving dollars. Yes. As they can. Yes. They well, in Argentina, if you want to buy a house, if you want to buy a used car, you do it in dollars. Mm. People do not put peso prices to houses, right? And since the economy is so destroyed, we have, like, I know, 150% inflation per year. The inflation numbers are like 10, 15% per month, right? So, Prices are always changing and there is no mortgages. So if you want to buy a house, you meet up with a seller in a room with a notary and you have a suitcase of $100,000, $200,000, you count them, right? And you sign, uh, so you, everything is done in cash. You, you said between 10 and 15% of inflation per month so it's like uh, every five months, you're saving it's cut by half. Yes. Like crazy. Yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. people can't like make these things uh, in their minds. I, I will show you, I always carry with me in my wallet a few, I don't have the first one, but I, a few of the, all the bills that Argentina has had throughout the years. And we have destroyed in total five different currencies, right? In a year. Uh, no. No. no, we started, the first one was the longest running, like from 1880 till 1970. We took out two zeros and we made this one, uh, peso lei. So a hundred of the first one became one of these, right? This one lasted 13 years until the Falkland Wars in 18, 1983. We, we almost have the same thing in France. Yeah, like with the old friend and the new one, there was a factor of about, I guess, 100, something like this. Yeah. Or no, or maybe just 10. 
I'm, I'm making this shit. <laughs> one zero, two zeros. Yeah. Yeah. So first it was two zeros. This it got up to one million peso notes, right? And in '83 they took out four zeros. Ten thousand of these became one of oh, peso argentino. This one, the one that lasted the least, two years, they destroyed it from 83 to 85, right? So total disaster. Uh, so then a thousand of these became one, sorry, uh, for that, became one Austral, right? And the Austral first was worth more than one dollar. 83 cents of these bought you one dollar. But seven years later, you needed 10,000 Australs to buy you the same dollar in 92, right? So then they decided to do a new currency, which was the peso convertible, convertible peso. And this one for 10 years was pegged to the dollar one to one, like a USDT. Right? So we had almost no inflation for 10 years, from 92 till the end of 2001. But then they, they finished this, and now, I don't know if I have it here or where, uh, we started uh, floating the currency and devaluing the currency. It went immediately to 4 pesos to a dollar, and ever since it's going to 10, 15, 20, 40, 60, 1,000, <laughs> 1,200. Now we are about 1,000 pesos for one dollar. So, among all these currencies, we destroyed, we took out 13 zeros, and now we should be able to take out another three more zeros and become one peso, one dollar, right? So, 16 zeros in like, I don't know, uh, 50 years. 16. 16 zeros. So the Central Bank of Argentina is a murdering machine. It's, uh, it's uh, destroying the lives of uh, people that say, all your life's worth will go down to zero, right? So it's useless to save in this shitcoin, right? Uh, that's why Argentines really got into Bitcoin and got uh, understood the, the idea early on. Because the, this currency is shit, it destroys lives. Uh, we even had, in 2001, uh, like a bank run, where people could not take out the money out of the banks. People were protesting against the curtains of the banks, give me my money, uh, and they didn't have the money. Right? Even fake money, they couldn't print yes. it. Yes, they couldn't. Uh, so... I hope Argentina comes out of this. We will have to see the next few months what happens. There are a lot of forces that want to take Millet down, right? He, Inside Argentina. Yes, yes. Uh, he, he likes to call it the political caste system, right? Uh, they get into power and they never leave power. And they are uh, tangled with the, with the bankers and the media and the academia, similar to what Saifedin teaches in Fiat Standard, right? And he wants, yeah, to finish it, take the, make, make, give freedom back to the people. Uh, what, what could be the solution to like push them out of the, the political overview? Um, well, because it, it's happened almost the same thing in uh, El Salvador, no? Like the, in El Salvador. Like everything was corrupt, so at one point it seemed like you kind of need some, um, like a half dictator, like just to to destroy everything and to come back with some uh, some healthy uh, ground. Do, do, do you think it's what will happen in uh, in Argentina? Or? I mean, I will give give him like a fifty percent chance of succeeding. Uh, yeah, there's many people trying for him to resign, for everything to go bad, fail. Uh, but it might happen. Like right now, Argentina is terri terrible. Like there's uh, inflation, 
in dollars. So I remember I went back in November and a liter of gas to fill up a car was 30 cents of a dollar. So I could fill up the car for $12, right? Totally super cheap. By February, it was like 90 cents of a dollar to buy a liter. So it went three times up, uh, so 200% inflation in dollar terms, right? But the salaries have not gone up. Salaries in Argentina are like 300, perhaps $400 per month for a normal job, right? So it's really tough to live there. If you pay rent, you're going to be paying 200, 250, $300 per month for a studio apartment. So how come you live for the rest of the month with only 100, right? It's like $3 per day. So yeah, salaries need to go up. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it's going to be a disaster. Millet is going to lose support. Um, you know, anything can happen. And what, what does explain this? Because for like people that don't understand like the, the, the mechanics behind, is it just like the reality, like just striking uh, up the, the thing and just... Uh, like because they, they push the reality with the, the, the fake money and the, the fake incentive, uh, just breaking everything. And now, like the reality is coming back and that's why yeah. like everyone seems yeah. poor uh, now. Yeah, because Argentina was doing what now every country is doing. So I, I like to joke with my Argentine colleague driving La Biconeta that we come from the future and we are here to warn Europeans and Americans of what's coming. Because, for example, the United States is somewhat becoming what Argentina is. I mean, there's, they're, for example, pushing the narrative that the culprit or the, the ones causing the inflation are the businessmen. That's typical Argentine uh, culture. Like Beyonce. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I saw so many uh, posts like this. It's crazy. So Biden is doing that, right? And people at first, most people believe that message. Like up until Millet, uh, people thought businessmen were the culprits. But now if you go to Argentina and you ask the taxi driver, if you ask people on the street, Okay, who's causing the inflation? And they would say, no, it's the central bank, it's the government, right? Uh, we have to finish it, or we have to... So he really made a the, change the in the culture. Yeah. So I have a... Yeah, I give a chance that everything comes out fine, or at least he's able to finish the term or we be re-elected. And I believe after that, Millet will become like a world leader. He will go around countries giving talks, inspiring other politicians in other countries to do the same, right? Uh, give people freedom. I hope for Bitcoin to take that role, right? Uh, people choose in Bitcoin. Uh, Millet is not, I mean, I've tried to orange pill him many times. I, I know him since 2014. Uh, but he's a uh, of a, when you talk to, uh, to him about Bitcoin, after a few minutes, he will say, yeah, I'm all in for private money. I mean, I'm all in for private enterprise. So Bitcoin is private. Uh, yeah, it's okay, use it. He doesn't go deep, like, on why Bitcoin is better than Ethereum, or why Bitcoin is better than any other crypto. I, I don't think he knows that, yeah. sadly, right? Uh, but I think I prefer that than um, uh, Naib Bukele trying to impose the, the use the of down, Bitcoin. The top down, yeah. yeah. He, he, if he don't care and he's like just pro uh, like uh, free banking and those stuff, for me it's even better. Because yeah. people have to realize from themselves what is good and what is not. And, uh, yeah, as long as you keep an eye on the scammers, um, I mean, almost all cryptos have gone to zero. There are 20,000, 30,000 of them. Anybody can do one. So it's a really easy way to scam people. Yeah, you hide behind the crypto yeah. uh, or blockchain uh, facade. Uh, 
but it's really not safe, right? This is something that we as Bitcoiners need to push into the culture, that not because you're watching something have cryptography or, or yeah, use blockchain, will make it safe. Uh, actually, it's a really easy way to scam people and get away with it, right? So beware uh, yeah. of all the crypto world, not the Bitcoin world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the crypto world. We are making a lot of posts uh, on Twitter saying uh, those stuff, but there is also all, um, all the time the crypto community coming out say, yeah, you don't understand, you're saying shit. There is also some good thing in crypto. It's, it's, it's hard to, to push them. And uh, sometimes you feel like uh, when you try to, to fight with them, you're making them uh, more uh, publicity and uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a divide, I guess. Or sometimes they don't understand why we are like this, right? Mm. Um, I say that crypto tries to cling to Bitcoin's leg, right? And we are like, no, get out of me, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't cling yeah, to me. It's like the, the meme with uh, crypto and Bitcoin inside. But no, the reality is like there is Bitcoin and there is the fiat with crypto inside. Exactly. Yeah. So I really think that Bitcoiners, we need to teach about this, uh, really show the difference. That's why we're doing Bitcoineta. Bitcoineta, one of its main roles is to differ differentiate Bitcoin from crypto, right? So to put it into the culture, no, it's not the same thing. It doesn't have the same values. It doesn't have the same uh, developer uh, ethos or culture. Um, the other can be easily replicated. Uh, it can be forged. Uh, yeah, it can be yeah, many, many things, right? Um, there's only, this is a, an event that happens once in a lifetime, right? So... In a human lifetime. Yes. Like the history of the human life, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So... And uh, th there was, a, just to, to come back to Argentina and Javier Millet, there was a, um, a quote from you during the interview with Robert Bullove, and you said that you went to UK And you, you spoke with a, a guy that told you that once there was an expression saying that uh, being rich as an Argentine. Yes. It's yes. just crazy how a country, because it was an expression during the, the, the last century, I guess. Right. The, I would say the first half of yeah. the 20th century, uh, people would say, oh, he's as rich as an Argentine, right? Mm. Uh, meaning like, you couldn't be as rich as an Argentine, right? Uh, Argentina, if I go back in history, around 1850 was a super poor country. We call it like, the, we had like barbarians at the gate, right? Uh, but a classical liberal revolution uh, started in mind of a few intellectuals, just like the founding fathers of the United States. And they did a classical liberal constitution one of the first constitutions in history to recognize private property as an inalienable right. And it also said that it's in the preamble. It says any foreigner that wants to come to live to Argentina will have the same rights as a citizen. So Argentina opened up to anybody to come to Argentina. Uh, the founding fathers really wanted like the top notch Europeans from Germany, yeah. top notch. Like they, they wanted like uh, the best of the best of Europe. And well, we got everybody, right? And yeah, the, so we become a world superpower. Like we the we top were seven. Yeah, we were like top seven on par with Canada and Australia. There is no France in the class. <laughs> well, I know. I don't know. Perhaps it is. I, I don't. I don't know the charts so well, but. After that, we started doing some reforms. We got a lot of immigration that brought from Europe socialist, communist, anarcho-communist ideas. And they started to put it into the politics. And by also 1930, we had the first military coup. Uh, so we lost democracy, right? And those militaries 
they they were enamored with Hitler, Mussolini, right? Perón was a, a dictator back then, and he was fascinated with Perón and Mussolini, uh, uh, Hitler and Mussolini, right? Uh, then he changed after the Second World War, uh, but they say that by 1950, uh, this is a special episode. Uh, the central bank was filled with gold. You couldn't walk in the aisles because of all the gold that was there. And by the end of Perón's uh, mandate, there was no gold. This, they, they took it all, right? Uh, so Argentina has been on a decline ever since. So it's a very interesting experience to live a continuous decline, right? Uh, that was my life experience and many Argentines experience. Other countries like Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay, Chile, Brazil, no, they've experienced the last 20, 30 years going up, right? Bolivia was super poor, Paraguay was poor, Brazil even was a lot of really poor, and now they are taking people out of poverty into the middle class, right? Argentinians have experienced, no, we are super rich, we're poorer, we're poorer, we're poorer. And if it wasn't for Millet, the politics would have continued. And most likely by now, Argentina will be Venezuela with salaries under $100 per month. You go towards, at one moment, Venezuela had salaries of $30 per month. It's, or it's like Cuba, right? Or Africa. So it's really interesting to see how countries with one set of ideas can blossom and prosper. Everybody can make their own money and keep their own stuff. And you put in a central bank to inflate the currency and eventually everything goes down towards death, towards nothingness, right? The zero. Uh, it's really... Is there any documentary about the decline of uh, Argentina? Because for me, it's like, It should be the, the world should be spread everywhere well, because it's it's a labo laboratory of what happened. When, I guess uh, there were some done in Spanish back then, like in the 2001 crisis. Right now, I'm writing a book about all of this. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm connecting because I realize Europeans do not know about yeah. the history of 2001, for example. That was terrible. Uh, so the idea of the book is first to talk about Argentina then about Bitcoin and finish with how a Bitcoin world would look like because it will have different economics. And also I'm into the more spiritual aspect or religious uh, aspect of Bitcoin. So I want to close with that. Okay, good. Uh, so I hope to have this book ready by mid, mid of the year, middle of oh, the year. Okay. I still not decided on the title. It's, it could be something like what an Argentine can teach you about Bitcoin. Right. Good. Uh, we need it. So we really need that, <laughs> especially in France and in Europe. Like, it's getting so quick. And uh... yeah, because some, when you're living in a country that is properly functioning, you don't see the need, right? People in the UK, France, United States sometimes, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't understand why the rest of the world needs Bitcoin. But, but we do. Yeah. Right. And if If these countries continue on the path that they're in, they are going to need it. Uh, you will feel it. You will start feeling the inflation. People will start questioning, oh, what is this? What's happening? Uh, I'm getting poorer, right? Uh, I'm losing my capital. Uh, I've got one last question. Sure. I I've seen the, the speech of Javier Millet in the, during the, the Davos uh, meetup. It <laughs> was a great speech. You should watch it. That was amazing. Yeah. Really, for me, I, I almost had the, the goosebump. <laughs> <laughs> and um, wh what was your reaction to it? And uh, how did it feel? And um, for, for me, it was kind of like weird to have those kind of speech in like the, the worst place in the world, like where they, they are trying to, to impose some like global governance, some, uh, some 
yes, some kind of communist idea, and uh, but hiding in some uh, capitalist connivence things. Yeah. So what was your reaction? Well, it's a funny reaction because it's like I hear my dad speaking. <laughs> ah, really? Your yeah, dad, yeah. Like... My, my father had these ideas all, all through yeah. his life. Uh, I sometimes like to compare my dad to Javier Millet because he also was a crazy liberal. And he also went to TV. He also did TV shows back in the 90s. Uh, so it's really nice to... So, yeah, to see these ideas finally come into the mainstream, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the way things are. I mean, perhaps these ideas were in the heads of Mises, Hayek, Rothbard, 80 years ago, 70 years ago, and they take their time, right? They, they take, they, they go through the minds of the people, and now they're flourishing. So they're becoming culture, they're becoming mainstream. Uh, of course, that side of the aisle of ideas will try to minimize it, right? But you will see that people, for example, now in Europe have discovered Millet only like six or 12 months ago. We've had Millet for years, the Argentines, right? So you will see grassroots people, movements of people translating their, his videos, Yeah, now they're doing it's... the AI translation, yeah. which are great, right? Um, and these videos will start going viral all throughout the world in all languages. Uh, and yeah, these ideas will start to catch little by little. Eh? It's going to be 10% of the population, 15% of the population. So I guess if European politicians or American politicians can sense that there's a, an opportunity, right? Mm. So now that freedom will become popular as well, it's a counter reaction to the, what we had in the COVID years. Uh, yeah, uh, the woke movement, right? Uh, of yeah, we have to not pollute or yeah, we downplay the white male, right? <laughs> so now you are the the oppressed. Yeah. You are the, the censored one, right? Uh, because if you apply for a job, a black woman that is transgender <laughs> will get it before you, right? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we've seen it with the um, the last uh, MMA uh, fighter. Y you've seen the video, mm, no? no? no, no. The, 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 there was a fight with a uh, MMA fighter, and he won. And at the end, he said, "Yeah." Um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he had talked about Mrs. Right? You're yeah, about exactly. This. Like I, I believe you should read it uh, if you like your country. Uh, it was crazy. I was like, at first I thought it was AI generated. I couldn't no, believe it. He mentioned, I think it's the six. Uh, yeah, the six lessons of Ludwig van Mises. Okay, uh, so that that uh, six laws were given in Buenos Aires, and I believe my father was there. Oh no way! <laughs> uh, it was the 60s, right? Okay. So well, my father is in a, an asylum in Buenos Aires. I really want to get back to him and ask him, because I'm not sure if it was Mises or Hayek that he, my father went to see when they went to Argentina. So it would be really nice to... What do you remember about that day, right? Uh, mm. uh, with Mises. So yeah, it's everything is connected. Like yeah. uh, I'm, we are here at the Beacon Film Festival in Warsaw. And when they show clips of, uh, yeah, trailers from movies, I see like my Argentine friends <laughs> uh, giving parts of the movie. So it's so, so funny. I mean, uh, we, yeah, it's amazing how everything is connected and ideas spread. Um, yeah, in 20, 30 years, they're going to be talking about what we're doing now. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it's make me feel, uh, think about the, uh, the code that there is, um... Like when you have the ice calm, there is nothing uh, that can stop it. Yeah, like I think this. Victor Hugo said it. Yeah, or, really uh, great one. Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. Yeah, exactly. No. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we will end uh, on this. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> it was you, a Victor. really great time uh, the same, the with same. you. We learned uh, many things. Follow us on La Bitoneta. Yeah. 
So the original is La Bitcoineta. The one we do in Europe is at Bitcoineta EU. Mm -hmm. And you can also follow me on X. It's at Ariel Aguilar. Okay. I'm not Thank sure you. I'm following you. I will check. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you.